So let's talk about some of the mechanisms of how gluten actually causes damage. And we're not going to get into all of them, but I want to give you some of the major ones tonight. So this first one here is we know that gluten can cause GI damage and lead to leaky gut. Now we'll talk about leaky gut a little bit more in just a minute, but one of the things that happens with leaky gut is an autoimmune process. So we know leaky gut is oftentimes the precursor to the development of autoimmune disease and many of the autoimmune diseases cause pain. We also know that gluten sensitivity will cause people to start developing more and more allergies. So if you found yourself become more and more sensitive to more and more foods as you're getting older, um, this is one of the major hallmarks of that is that gluten is, is one of the major culprits. One of the other things that gluten can do is malabsorption of nutrients, not just vitamins, but also minerals, right? So here we've got malabsorption of vitamins, but you could add minerals and other nutrients to that, to that, uh, to that um, component. Now, when you're malabsorbing, lots of things can happen, but one of the things that happens is your immune system falters. You get immune system deficits, and you know, especially during this time right now, most of you want your immune systems working really strong as we go into cold and flu season. The inability to heal and repair. Remember, what do you need nutrients for? Nutrients are the building blocks for your body's ability to heal and repair. Okay, so your body has a healing and every day our body takes on damage. And every day our body heals and repairs that damage if it has what it needs to do that. And that's what vitamins and minerals do. So if you don't have, for example, let's say you go to the gym and you work out, you're damaging your body. You're putting your body under stress and you're damaging it. And what does it take to heal and repair from that exercise or activity? Well, it takes nutrients like magnesium and zinc and calcium, right? These are the, the key building blocks that help your body heal and repair from that damage. So what happens if you multiply this over five years, over 10 years, over 15 years, and you're malnourished for years and years and years, your body's ability to heal and repair consequently becomes diminished, it becomes minimized, and you start getting older much earlier. You start aging quicker because you don't have the building blocks for healing and repair. We also know that gluten can alter healthy gut microbes, right? And so one of the things, when you alter gut microbes, especially when you reduce certain species, that causes malnourishment because some of these bacteria produce B vitamins. A lot of these, these healthy bacteria that we, live, that we thrive on, right? So if you're using antibiotics all the time, wiping out your gut bacteria, you can actually cause malabsorption of, uh, not so much malabsorption, but you can cause a lack of production, especially of the B vitamins. And some of the B vitamins directly are linked to pain, especially neuropathy, as I'll, I'll show you in just a minute. We also get increased risk of yeast overgrowth and bacterial infections. We have immune system dysregulation. So we, we don't want these things to be chronically happening as a result of gluten-induced damage. Now, I told you I'd, I'd talk about, um, about leaky gut here. Let me skip ahead to that, um, to that slide for you. So, you know, one of, the, one of the big components of what gluten can do is it can cause leaky gut. Now, there certainly are other things that can cause leaky gut. Gluten's not the only thing. Um, but gluten is a major contributor. So what happens in the GI tract, these are GI cells, you can see in this diagram, and you can see they're, they're, they're tight, they're packed to end together, right? Whereas these two cells are not, there's a gap in between. That's the leak, right? So when we talk about leaky gut, um, the leak is when the cells separate out. And one of the reasons this happens is that gluten damages these little anchoring proteins that help, help seal the cells together. And so now what happens is, you see all these little, these little critters right here, these are microbes and they produce toxins. And some of those toxins are called LPS, lipopolysaccharides. And what happens is those LPS toxins leak into your blood, your portal circulation. And, uh, and so that, these toxins, some of them can mimic nerves, thyroid tissue, muscle tissue, joints, cartilage. And so what happens is when these things leak into your blood, your immune system, which is concentrated right behind your gut wall, will come over and it will attack that LPS because it, it sees it and it says, this is, a, this is a bacterial toxin, it's a bad guy, let's attack it. And so it does. But if that LPS mimics or looks like your nerves, your thyroid, your muscles, your joints, 
And what we end up happening is this process called molecular mimicry. Molecular mimicry means that your immune system thinks when it's attacking your joints and it's attacking your muscles because it thinks it, it's confusing these tissues for this bacterial toxin or this fungal toxin. Again, whatever you've got going on here because there's a leak, because there's a gap. Remember your gut is supposed to be a quarantined area. It quarantines the contents of the GI tract away from the bloodstream and it only selectively allows nutrients and other healthy things into the bloodstream. But when the gut's leaking, all bets are off. To those toxins can breach into your bloodstream and create this molecular mimicry process which can wreak havoc on the body creating chronic inflammation. And it's that chronic inflammation, if you come back and look at this slide, you'll have a better understanding of what chronic inflammation does and how it can manifest, how, it, how over time it really creates an issue. So this is what we call the grain inflammation cycle. I wrote on in depth about this in No Grain, No Pain, in my book, No Grain, No Pain, because it's not, it's not just gluten. So that's kind of one of the mistakes you know, a lot of people make is they think, oh, it's, it's, you know, gluten is the problem. And they're not wrong. Gluten is a problem, but it's not just, it's not just the gluten. So you notice here, gluten is one aspect, but then there's, you know, there's a genetic manipulation of a lot of the grains and the pesticides that we get exposure to and other non-gluten-like proteins. There's one family of proteins called ATIs, amylase trypsin inhibitors. We've got heavy metals that are commonly found in grains, especially rice. Rice is very rich in heavy metals. We have excessive omega-6 fatty acids, which promote inflammation. We've got mold and the byproduct of mold, which is mycotoxins. And then we have excessive carbohydrates, which can drive up insulin, blood sugar, and cortisol. We've got, again, that leaky gut component that I just showed you. So when we look at the grain inflammation cycle, we talk about why is grain as a food, um, why is it one of the biggest culprits in driving forward pain? It's because of all these things, not just gluten. So some of you say, well, I, I'm not gluten sensitive. My doctor said I could eat gluten. Well, what about all these other potential possibilities? So these things, as you shove them through this funnel, one of the outcomes, right, is inflammation. You get chronic inflammation that begins this process of, okay, I hurt. Now what? So when most people hurt, they visit their doctor, right? They sidetrack over, visit their doctor in mainstream uh, medicine and in, 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 in uh, most industrialized countries. The focus of pain, okay, is, is what I call uh, the guy's of compassion. What do I mean by guys of compassion? It means a doctor in their effort to be compassionate, okay, says, let's give you something for your pain. That seems compassionate on the surface, just like it, it seems compassionate. Um, you know, there's the old, the old adage, give a man a fish or you can teach a man to fish. And to me, uh, when a doctor gives a drug, what they're doing is they're giving you a fish. They're not teaching you how to fish. In essence, they're not teaching you why you have inflammation, which it would serve you better, right? So this is what I, it's really, it's a guise. It's pseudo-compassion. It's false compassion. Because uh, there are exceptions to that rule. Don't get me wrong. Some, you know, there are some people that are dying and they're on their deathbed and their pain is so great. And so it would be compassionate to help them, to help put them out or ease their pain, right? Um, there's compassion in that. But for somebody who's got chronic arthritis or chronic pain, a lot of this is the first thing you do is you get a drug that suppresses the immune system or masks the pain, which basically shuts off your body's alarm system and it says, hey, you know, your body tells you there's something wrong by having pain. That's your body's way of saying change, do something different. And so most people get this medicated, right? Their doctor medicates it. And so then what happens is the inflammation never really truly goes away because these things, right, especially if you're reacting to the grain, these things are still coming into the funnel. So there's still more inflammation. It's just that some of the inflammation you're suppressing. But you're not, it's not completely going away. And so what that does over time is it increases the cortisol response because what does cortisol do? Cortisol is your body's pain hormone. It's, it's your body's anti-inflammatory hormone. Your body will produce more cortisol to try to put out inflammation, okay? And so what is cortisol? Cortisol is a catabolic. It's a steroid. It's a catabolic steroid though. What does catabolic mean? That means it breaks down your body. 
it basically breaks down your bone, it breaks down your muscle, that's why you get muscle loss here. You get bone loss too. This is why chronic cortisol use is associated with water retention, elevations in blood pressure, weakening of the muscles or shortening of the muscles and osteoporosis, right? So, you know, fast forward this five years, this, this dramatic response, and sometimes the medicine is cortisol, right? Sometimes the doctors give cortisol. There are a lot of different pain medicines. There's opiates, there's, there's steroid pain reduction medications, there's immune suppressing medications, there's drugs like uh, NSAIDs, non steroidal anti-inflammatories, uh, and there's drugs like Tylenol, but all, all of them in, in indefinitely just reduce your perception of pain without actually ad addressing why the inflammation is there, which again, over time, your body's still gonna respond by overproducing cortisol. Your muscles are gonna shrink, your bones are gonna shrink. Well, guess what happens to your metabolism when your muscle and your bone shrinks? Is you get weight gain because your metabolism slows down and so now you start gaining weight. What happens when you gain weight is you put more pressure, okay, more pressure on the joints because you, if you're, you're gaining fat, right? You're storing water and fat and you're putting more of that on your body and so now your joints have to carry that around and so now there's compression on your joints, right? And what is compression, excessive compression on the joint causes? Cause it causes more inflammation. So now, whereas this started, as a chemical reaction. It was a chemical inflammation. By the time you get through the cycle, you're now at mechanical inflammation because it's weight gain that triggers the excessive pressure that triggers the wear and tear. And what's the solution? Whether it's mechanical or whether it's chemical, the solution is pseudo-compassion, right? The guise of compassion, getting pain medication, and the cycle never ends. It just keeps going, unless you wanna wake up, right? Well, that's what we're having this show tonight, wake up. The pain is there for a reason. Don't ignore it. You're not getting older. It's not an old injury per se. The pain is there because most likely you're doing something, whether that's eating grain, there are other things that can cause chronic inflammatory pain as well or chemical induced pain. But grain is in our diets today, grain represents more than 50% of the caloric intake of Americans. And it's one of the top causes of chronic pain. And if we would make this change in medicine, if we would just make this change across the board, you would see pain clinics going out of business. You would see hospitals having crickets chirping in the waiting room because so many people would be so less inflamed and have so many less problems as a result of this process driving their health into the hole, into the ground. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.